Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will give introduction of XML. So, what is XML? XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. XML is a markup language much like HTML. XML was designed to carry data, not to display data. XML tags are not predefined. You must define your own tags. XML is designed to be self-descriptive and XML is a W3C recommendation. Now let's see difference between XML and HTML. XML is not a replacement of HTML, but XML and HTML were designed with different goals. XML was designed to transport and store data with focus on what data is and HTML was designed to display data with focus on how data looks. HTML is about displaying information while XML is about carrying information. Now, XML is just a plain text. In XML, nothing is special. It is just plain text. Software that can handle plain text can also handle XML. However, XML aware application can handle the XML tags specially. The functional meaning of tags depends on the nature of the application. You can create your own tags using XML. That is because XML language has no predefined tags. The tags used in HTML and the structure of HTML are predefined. HTML document can only use tags defined in HTML standard. XML allows the author to define his own tags and his own document structure. And now XML is everywhere. It has been amazing to see how quickly the XML standard has developed and how quickly a large number of software vendors have adopted the standard. XML is now as important for the web as HTML was to foundation of the web. XML is everywhere. It is the most common tool for data transmission between all sorts of applications and is becoming more and more popular in the area of storing and describing information. So, this is about introduction of basic XML. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will study about use of XML and how to use XML. So, XML is used in many aspects of web development, often to simplify data storage and sharing. So, let's see various use of XML. First, XML separates data from HTML. If you need to display dynamic data in your HTML document, it will take a lot of work to edit the HTML each time the data changes. With XML, data can be stored in separate XML files. This way, you can concentrate on using HTML for layout and display. And be sure that changes in the underlying data will not require any changes to the HTML. With a few lines of JavaScript, you can read an external XML file and update the data content of your HTML. XML simplifies data sharing. In the real world, computer system and databases contain data in incompatible formats. XML data is stored in plain text format. This provides a software and hardware independent way of storing data. This makes it much easier to create data that different application can share. XML simplifies data transport. With XML, data can easily be exchanged between incompatible systems. One of the most time-consuming challenge for developer is to exchange data between incompatible systems over the internet. Exchanging data as XML greatly reduces this complexity since the data can be read by different incompatible applications. XML simplifies platform changes. Upgrading to new system 
is always very time consuming. Large amount of data must be converted and incompatible data is often lost. XML data is stored in text format. This makes it easier to expand or upgrade to new operating system, new application or new browser without losing data. XML makes your data more available. Since XML is independent of hardware, software and application, XML can make your data more available and useful. Different application can access your data not only in HTML pages, but also from XML data sources. With XML, your data can be available to all kind of reading machines like handheld computer, voice machine, news feed, etc. And make it more available for blind people or people with other disabilities. XML is used to create new internet technologies or languages. A lot of new internet languages are created with XML. Let's see some of the examples. For example, XHTML, the latest version of HTML, is also created using XML. WSDL for describing available web services. Web and WML as a markup language for handheld devices, RSS language for news feeds, RDF and OWL for describing resource and ontology, SML for describing multimedia for the web. So these are the various uses of XML. You can find your domain and, and you can use XML where you want to use. So this is about various uses of XML. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to write XML document and we will create our first XML document. XML document is a self describing in syntax. So let's create XML document. You can use any text editor to create XML document. You can use Notepad, you can use Notepad++ or any XML editor. But we are using Notepad. First, you have to specify what version of XML are you using. So, first write less than sign and then question mark. This is the starting of any XML document. And then write XML version is equal to version which you are using. Here we are using 1.0 and then close this XML version declaration. As we know in XML we can create our own text. So now let's create our own text. We are creating XML document for one note. Means I want to send one note to my friend and I am creating node in XML. So I want to create node which is node and this is the root node. And in root node I have to write my child nodes. So I have created one root node which is node. Now I can give various child in this node. First I want to define two in which I will define to whom I want to send this node. I want to send it to John. Now I want to also describe from whom this document is came from. Means who is the sender of this node. So I am writing from and here sender name which is Paul and I am completing from tag. Now I want to define heading of the document means what is the purpose or what is the subject of this note. So I am writing this is for reminding meeting and I am completing heading tag. Now I want to give some message or body of message so I am creating body tag 
and in body tag i can write my actual message means i'm writing this is reminder for our meeting so you can see i have created one root node which is not and four childs which is two from heading and body now this is our simple xml document now to save this document press control s select the folder where you want to save and save this document using .xml extension now to run this document go to your folder and open the xml file within any browser you can see simple tags are displayed there is no other special styles displayed in xml output this is our output of xml document we can see we can expand and collapse the xml nodes so this is the root node in which various styles are available so we can expand this node and xml version is also displayed and these are the various styles of of our root node so this is the output which shows data available in xml document so we have created simple xml document and this is about creating simple xml document thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will study about xml tree xml documents form a tree structure xml documents must contain a root element this element is the parent of all other elements the element in the xml document form a document tree the tree start at the root and branches to the lowest level of tree all elements can have sub elements which is called child elements for example in this code fragment of xml first is the root element and in root element we have written child element we can also put sub child element and we can also put sub sub child element so this is the tree of our xml document for example in previous tutorial we have created not as a root node and two from heading and body as a child node the term parent child and sibling are used to describe the relationship between elements parent elements have children children on the same level are called siblings now let's see one ex example of bookstore so you can see we have created one xml document of bookstore here bookstore is the root element in which we have created book as the child element now book contains various category this category is attribute about attribute we will more see in further tutorials and book contains further child elements which are title author year and price we are adding more and more data in this xml file so we have created one more node of book and define attribute category is equal to children title is equal to harry potter and we can also specify attribute in childs we are specifying author jk rowling year 2005 and price 29.99 dollar so this is the structure of xml document in this xml document book is the parent element of title author year and price same way we have created three parent element and we have added various childs and we have completed root node now let's see tree of this document root element is bookstore we have given parent and child relationship to book element we have given attribute category now book element contains 
फोर सब एलिमेंट विच इज टाइटल ऑथर यर एंड प्राइस अगेन टाइटल कंटेन्स एट्रीब्यूट लैंग्वेज एंड टाइटल एंड ऑथर आर सीबलिंग्स ऑफ ईच अदर एंड फाइनली टेक्स्ट और डेटा इज रिटर्न इन दीज एलिमेंट सो धीज इज अबाउट ट्री स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एक्जेम एल डॉक्यूमेंट थैंक यू वेलकम फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी विल सी सिंटेक्स ऑफ एक्जेम एल डॉक्यूमेंट द सिंटेक्स रूल्स ऑफ एक्जेम एल आर वेरी सिंपल एंड लॉजिकल द रूल्स आर इजी टू लर्न एंड इजी टू यूज सो लेट सी फर्स्ट सिंटेक्स और फर्स्ट रूल ऑफ एक्जेम एल फर्स्ट रूल इज वी मस्ट हैव टू क्लोज टैग विच वी हैव क्रिएटेड सो लेट्स क्रिएट so let's create one tag which is paragraph and writing tags this is paragraph without completing this tag i am writing another paragraph tag which displays another paragraph and i am only completing this tag so this is not the right syntax we must have to complete the tag which we have started so we must have to complete this paragraph tag otherwise it is not correct syntax another rule is tag names are case sensitive for example i am writing message tag this is message is the content of message tag and i am completing this tag using capital m message then this is not the right syntax we must have to complete the tag which have small m this is the another rule because xml uses the w3c standard so we must have to complete the tag in same case which we have started so this is the second rule and another rule is about nesting of tags for example i am writing text in bold this is bold i want to also write this text in italic so i am writing italic tag also and i am completing first bold tag and then italic tag so you can see this is not the proper nesting of tags so in example we must have to nest tags properly so we must have to write first bold tag and then italic tag any content in tag and then we must have to complete the tag with which is started later so i am completing first italic tag and then bold tag so this is the proper syntax of nesting we must have to care about this syntax means we must have to close the tag we must have to write the tags with matching matching case because the xml is case sensitive and we must have to nest the proper tags so this is about xml syntax thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about another important xml syntax so let's see one of the syntax of attribute xml elements can have attributes in name pairs just like in html so in xml the attribute value must always be quoted this is the another syntax rule of xml so you can see we have created one simple xml document now if i want to define the attribute for this date root element date is equal to any date which you want to give like this so attribute value we must have to put in double quote if we write like this 21 to 2012 then this will generate an error so we must have to put the attribute in double quote so this is the rule of xml syntax another rule is when we want to write special character in xml 
then we must have to use entity reference. For example, I want to write a message that salary is less than 1000 and I am completing message. Then this will not work and this will generate an error because less than will not work in XML. So we have to use the entity reference for this less than. For that we have to write ampersand sign for less than entity reference is LT and semicolon. So it will display salary is less than 100. If I want to give greater than then we have to write GT in place of LT. If I want to write ampersand sign then I have to write AMP. If I want to give apostrophe sign then I have to write apos and if I want to display quote then I have to write quot means quote. So this is the various entity reference. Another rule is we must have to put the tags in root tag. We cannot define any tags without root tag. If I remove this not tag and I just write all the to from and message tags without this not tag then this will not work. This will generate error in XML. So we must have to write this all tags in one root. And if I want to give comment in XML then I can give comment using less than sign exclamation mark dash dash and write content which you want to write in comment and then again dash dash and greater than sign. So this is the XML comment. Now let's save this document and see what is the output. We can see comment is disabled or it is not highlighted. And in less than sign we can see less than sign is displayed using the entity reference and we have also given the attribute which is dead. So this is the proper syntax of writing XML, XML document. So this is about XML syntax. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will study about XML elements. An XML element is everything from the elements start tag to the elements end tag. An element can contain other elements, simple text or a mixture of both. Elements can have attributes. So let's see one example of element. We have created one document which you already know. Example of bookstore. Here bookstore is also one type of element and it is a root element and in bookstore there is a child element called book. We can also give attributes to element means here attribute is given category is equal to children. We will study more about attributes in next tutorial. So this is the element. Everything in XML document is an element as I have said earlier. So title is also one type of element and this text is also an element. Now let's see various naming rules of elements. XML elements must follow these naming rules. Names can contain letters, numbers and other characters. Names cannot start with number or punctuation character. Names cannot start with letters XML. Names cannot contain spaces. Any name can be used no words are reserved. Means if the words is a keyword then we cannot use that word. Now let's see some of the best naming practices of giving name to elements. Make name more descriptive. Names with an underscore or separator are nice. For example, I give first underscore name or last underscore name. Then this is the good name. Name should be short and simple like this book underscore title. But if I write the title underscore of underscore the underscore book, then it will be too long. So this is not good name for element. Avoid hyphen characters. If you name something first hyphen name 
some software may think you want to subscribe name from first so this is not best practices avoid dot characters if you name something first dot name software may think that name is a property of objects first so avoid this type of convention to write name of element avoid colon character colons are reserved to be used for something called name spaces so avoid this type of character in your naming element xml documents often have corresponding databases a good practice is to use the naming rules of your database for the elements in the xml document so these are the various rule and naming convention of naming the element and about the element thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about xml attributes xml elements can have attribute in start tag same as html we have already specified attributes in previous example but in this tutorial we will learn how to write attributes attributes can be given to any element so if i want to give attribute to this book element then I can give attribute at a starting tag of book. So if I want to define category of book, then I can give using, I have to write category is equal to, as the rule of XML, we must have to write attribute in double quote or single quote. So I am writing category is equal to children. If value of attribute contains double quote then we have to use entity reference or we must have to write attribute in single quote so double quote will be included in attribute value so we have defined attribute in book tag we cannot define more than one attributes in xml so we must have to write only one attribute in any tag if i want to give attribute then I have to use alternate way. So we have to create any element. Best way is to create element in place of attribute because, because there is some disadvantages of attribute. We cannot access the attribute in tree manner. Another disadvantage of attribute is it cannot contain multiple values and we cannot expand the attribute means if you want to expand the changes in future then we cannot expand the attribute in future so this is the disadvantage of attribute over a element so alternate way is element we can define attribute as an element for example if i want to define category then i can give category and give children value so this is the alternate way of defining attribute Attribute is also used for metadata purpose. For example, I want to give ID of book, then I can use ID here. ID is same like ID in HTML. To access this element, I can use this ID. So I am giving ID. So this is the example of defining attribute. But we are using attribute for special purpose. If you want to define multiple attribute, then we have to use elements. So this is about attributes in XML. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will give introduction of DTD. DTD stands for document type definition. It defines the legal building blocks of XML document. It defines the document structure with a list of legal elements and attributes. A DTD can be declared inline inside an XML document or as an external reference. Now there is a question why to use DTD? So let's talk about this. With a DTD each of your XML files can carry a description of its own format. With a DTD independent group of people can agree to use a standard DTD for interchanging data. Your application can use standard DTD to verify 
that the data you receive from the outside world is valid. You can also use a DTD to verify your own data. Now let's see various building blocks of XML document. Seen from a DTD point of view, all XML documents are made up of following building blocks. First is the elements, second is the attributes, third one is the entities, fourth one is the PC data and last one is C data. Now let's see each one by one. Elements are main building blocks of both XML and HTML documents. We have already seen elements in previous tutorials and everything in XML documents are elements. Attributes provide extra information about elements. Attributes are always placed inside the opening tag of an element. We have already talked about attributes also. Entities. Some characters have special meaning in XML like the less than sign that defines the start of an XML tag. So we cannot use this less than sign directly. If we want to display less than sign in XML, then we must have to use entity reference. We have already discussed about entity reference in previous videos. For example, if I want to display less than sign, then I have to write ampersand sign LT and colon. It will display less than sign. Now let's talk about PC data. PC data means parse character data. Think of character data as the text found between the start tag and the end tag of an XML element. PC data is the text that will be passed by a parser. The text will be examined by the parser for entities and markup. Tags inside the text will be treated as a markup and entities will be expanded. However, past character data shouldn't contain any ampersand less than or greater than characters. This needs to be represented by the entity reference. Now let's talk about C data. C data means character data. C data is text that will not be passed by a parser. Tags inside the text will not be treated as a markup and entity will not be expanded. So this is all about introduction of DTD. We must have knowledge of basic this introduction to proceed further in DTD. So this is about introduction of DTD. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to write DTD for our XML document. So we have already created one XML document. Now you already know how to write XML document. But in this example, we will learn how to write internal DTD. So to write internal DTD, you first have to write doc type tag. So write doc type. After writing doc type, write your root node. My root node is not and then write opening square bracket. After opening the square bracket, you have to start various elements. First, I have to write my root element, which is not. So I am writing, so I am writing element. And then in root element, I have to write sequence of all children element. And we must have to follow the sequence that is in document. So my first children is 2 and then write semicolon and then second children is from, third is the heading and last one is the body. So you must have to follow this sequence of writing children elements. Now complete this element tag and write element tag for children. Now I am writing element for 2. After writing 2 which is the children element, you must have to specify data type of this element. I am giving PC data. We already study about PC data in previous tutorial. Same way, I am defining for other children's, which is from 
PC data. And last is the body. Complete the all element tag and finally at the end when all elements are defined, you must have to close the square bracket and close the doc type tag. Save this document. Now our XML document contains DTD definition with doc type tag and our XML document. Now save this document with .xml extension and let's run and see what is the effect. We can see document is displayed which simply shows the data of our XML document. Similarly, we have seen in previous example. One addition to output is doc type tag which displayed doc type and or not which is the root element. So this is about DTD. DTD is mostly used for validation of data, means when we want to specify type of our data, then DTD is used. So this is about internal DTD definition. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn about external DTD and how to write external DTD. So we have created one XML document which contains not as a root element and two from heading and body as a child element. Now open a new notepad file. So we have opened a new notepad file and write and write directly various elements without writing doc type tag. So I am writing element root and sequence of to from heading and body child complete the element and then I am writing or second element or a first child element which is a two and specify data type of this element I am specifying PC data now all other things are same as in internal DTD, we are just specifying various elements of our document. Now I am writing for heading. My heading also contains PC data type and finally body element. Now save this document where your XML file exists and save this document using your file name dot DTD extension. Now go to your XML document. In XML document, after writing XML version, write doc type tag and then your document. After that, write system and then in double quote your DTD file path. My DTD name is not dot dtd so you have to write path with its extension and close doc type tag now go to the folder where your xml file is stored and open the xml file and let's run we can see doc type tag is displayed in the external dtd with this doc type tag is also displayed in internal dtd so this is the common but in this external dtd all doc type tag is displayed. All other things in output is same. We can see node which is our root node and our data in this output. So this is about how to create external DTD file and reference it to our XML file. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will give introduction to XML schema. So what is an XML schema? The purpose of an XML schema is to define the legal building blocks of XML document. Just like a DTD, an XML schema defines elements that can appear in a document. It defines attributes that can appear in a document. It defines which elements are child elements. It also defines 
the order of child elements. XML schema defines whether an element is empty or it can include text. It defines data types for elements and attributes. And last, it also defines default and fixed value for elements and attributes. So, this is the XML schema. XML schema are the successor of DTDs. We think that very soon XML schema will be used in most web applications as a replacement of DTDs. Here are some reasons. XML schemas are extensible to future editions. XML schema are richer and more powerful than DTDs. XML schema are written in XML. XML schema support data type and XML schema support namespaces. So, these are the various advantage of XML schema. XML schema support data types. One of the greatest strength of XML schema is the support of data types. With support of data types, it is easier to describe allowable document content. It is easier to validate the correctness of data. It is easier to work with data from a database. It is easier to define data fast restriction on data. It is easier to define da data patterns means data formats. It is easier to convert data from one data type to another data type or between different data types. So these are the various advantage and brief introduction of XML schema. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will see some reasons of why to use schema. So first reason is XML schema use XML syntax. Another great strength about XML schema is that they are written in XML. Some benefits of XML schema are written in XML are you don't have to learn a new language. So it saves lots of time and money. You can use your XML editor to edit your schema files. You can use your XML parser to parse your schema files. You can manipulate your schema with XML DOM. You can transform your schema with XSLT. XML schemas for secure data communication. When sending data from a sender to receiver, it is essential that the both parts have the same expectation about the content. With XML schemas, the sender can describe the data in a way that receiver will understand. A date like 03-11-2004 will in some countries be interpreted as a 3 November and in other countries as 11th March. However, an XML element with a data type like this date type is equal to date means we have defined here date element and we have passed date in the predefined format ensures a mutual understanding of the content because the XML data types date requires the format yyyymmdd so this is the predefined format in XML date type XML schemas are extensible XML schemas are extensible because they are written in XML. With an extensible schema definition, you can reuse your schema in other schemas, create your own data types derived from the standard data types, reference multiple schemas in the same document. Well form is not enough in XML. Even if documents are well formed, they can still contain errors and those errors can have serious consequence. Think of the following situation. You order 5 gross of laser printers instead of 5 laser printers. With XML schemas, most of those errors can be caught by your validation software. So, this is about how to use your XML schema. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to write XML schema definition. So, first line in XML schema definition is XML version. 
so we are defining schema for this or XML document which is not so we will define schema for to from heading and body childs and root node as a not so let's define XML schema after writing version you have to write XML schema which is XS after that write schema you have to specify XML NS which is XML name space and colon then XML schema which is XS is equal to give this path this is the path of standard defined by the W3 organization so we must follow this standard defined for XML schema this standard are located on this location so we have to pass this location as a XML namespace after defining this XML namespace you have to write target namespace so write target namespace is equal to write namespace where your schema is located so my schema is located on my website write your website name I am writing XML.com after giving target namespace write XML namespace which is XML NS is equal to your website name you can give your any website name here it is XML.com after writing target namespace in XML NS write element form default is equal to qualified this element form default specified that the XML namespace must be qualified in this document so we have to write this element form default and then complete the tag now we will start our XML element declaration so we are defining XML schema for our root for XML schema write XS and then element because we are creating element name is equal to or element is not so write not after that write xs complex type and then xs sequence because now we are giving sequence of our child element now in this sequence I have to write various child elements so I am declaring xs element name is equal to write or element name which is children element so my element name is 2 give type of element my type is string type so I am writing xs string and complete this tag so this is the declaration of xml schema element we can give any type we want if I want to define integer then I can also define integer now do this for all the children elements in our XML document so I am writing all the elements definition last element is body now complete the old tag first complete the access sequence tag and then complex type and access element which is for our root element and finally access schema schema so after writing all this thing save this document not dot and give extension x s d and save document so this is about how to write schema definition for XML document. In the next tutorial, we will learn how to reference this XST or a schema definition with our XML document. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to reference our XML schema definition with our XML document. So we have created already a schema definition in separate file, which is .xst file which we have created in previous tutorial so now we will link this schema definition file with our XML document so we have already a one simple XML document for which we have created schema definition now let's learn 
how to link the exist document with this XML document. So in the root element, write XML NS, which is XML namespace. In this XML namespace, you have to specify namespace on which namespace your schema is. So I am writing www dot xml dot com give full path of your after writing this write xml namespace and xml schema instance which is xsi is equal to predefined path for xml schema instance so i am writing this part www dot w3 dot org slash 2001 xml schema iphone instance so this path we must have to follow and this is the same for all xml schema instance and it is predefined by w3 organization now we must have to specify XML schema instance and its location. So I am specifying schema location is equal to the location of our XML schema definition, which is HTTP. Write your namespace, which is www.xml dot com space name and extension of our xml schema file which is not dot xsd this is the link or a reference to our xml schema definition without this link we cannot use xml schema validator so we must have to include this link for specifying xml schema definition for xml document now let's run this document we can see document have given the output in which first is the exercise schema location and the output contains simple data which is validated data if the schema is not proper or there is an error in the schema will not see the output in the browser you can also check error by the schema editor software or any xml editor software so this is about how to link schema definition file with our existing XML document. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to define attribute in XML schema definition of XML documents attribute. So now let's define one attribute for body element, which is the children element. I am defining language is equal to English. I have defined one attribute for body is language and I have given value English. Now in schema definition to give attribute validation we can use XML schema attributes. So in the complex type write XS attribute. Now you have to give for which you are specifying attribute. I am specifying attribute for body. So write body. And then what are you specifying? What is the attribute? My attribute name is lang. So I am writing lang, which is the language. And then you can specify various option. Now you can also specify data types for attribute. To specify data type for attributes, write type is equal to access string i am giving string data type for my attributes now there are various options are available for example you can give default value for attribute you can fix the value of attribute or you can make attributes optional or required let's see what is the procedure for example if i want to make my default attribute to hindi then I have to write default is equal to default value of attribute. If I want to fix the value of attribute, then I have to write fixed 
in place of default. So, if I write fixed is equal to Hindi, then default attribute will be Hindi. And then, if you want to specify attribute as a optional, then write use is equal to optional. When you are using this use, you cannot use fixed or default attribute. So, I am using use is equal to optional, then you can either specify attribute or not. Now, if I use required, then I must have to specify attribute in the XML document. After writing any option, close the attribute tag, which is access attribute. So, using the access attribute, you can specify various validation for attribute in your XSD file which is the XML schema definition. So this is all about attributes in XML schema. Thank you.